today on Can You Tube It, we're going to take this cabinet here, this roll of laminate, and who keeps setting the camera settings to costume time? It was me! Guys, come on, it's not funny. All right, hold on, here we go. And there you go, that's how you do it. Now, if you want to see how to do it without using movie magic, stick around. So what I've done is cut and measured a piece of the laminate here and it goes all the way from the bottom corner of this edge all the way over the top and all the way down to the other side. What I'm going to do is align this up with the back side of the cabinet and, and so it's overlapping on the front and I'm going to take my time and slowly work my way up trying to peel this laminate onto the cabinet making sure I don't leave any air bubbles. I've also removed the cabinet door so when the overlap comes from the laminate I'll be able to fold that over here making a really nice edge and a nice seal for this door. So I prop this up with a piece of wood to create a little gap at the bottom here, which will allow me to slide the paper just underneath the lip of the cabinet. So as I'm aligning up the back corner of this cabinet, it'll be a nice smooth edge along the bottom line, and then I'll align this all the way along the back side of this. Once I get to the top, I'll align it there before I start rolling my paper. So as I do this, it'll be one straight uniform edge going along the back side of the cabinet, and any excess I can wrap across the front and cut off. Okay, now that I've got my corner set, I'm going to start removing the backing from the adhesive and sticking it to the actual cabinet itself. For those of you who've never worked with contact adhesive before, the larger the piece you're working with, the way more difficult it is. Smaller is better when you're first starting out to get a feel for how it sticks, how to work the bubbles out. Highly recommend you get a big tool of some sort or a paint scraper or whatever to help work those bubbles out of your contact paper because there's going to be bubbles. There's nothing you can do about that. But working them out early pays off big at the end. And you have to do it inch by inch by inch. Because if you try to work the whole thing in and then work the bubbles out, it's going to warp, it's going to shift. It's just not going to look good. So definitely work slow. Get the bubbles out as you go along. If you're not used to working with contact paper, this might not be your best first project for uh, using it to refurbish something in your house. Okay, remember what I said before about take your time and do it slow and inch by inch by inch and get all the bubbles out. If you're into that, let's go with that. Uh, because, you know, some people really love perfection. And there's nothing wrong with loving perfection. But for me, I like functionality. I like getting the job done. I like getting results. And sometimes the time you invest to make perfection is not worth the time you invested for good enough. Sometimes perfection is the enemy of good enough. Sometimes, as I say, if it, was, wasn't called the, if it wasn't acceptable, it wouldn't be called the minimum. Um, so I'm the kind of guy that, you know, like I said, what I've done here, I just slapped it on there. I got really frustrated after about 10 minutes into it. I was like, this is going to take forever. So I slapped it on there. I stretched it out as best I could. I, sh I smoothed it all down. I had a ton of air bubbles. I got most of those out. I had a hair that got stuck in there. I'm not getting that out. So, yeah, if I was at a store and I was going to buy this, I'd say, eh, you know, there's some imperfections on this. I think you should take 30% off. And they say, okay, sure, we'll knock 100 bucks off it. I'd still buy it, and I'd still have this in my living room. If you're somebody who's set on perfection, take it slow, do it right, invest the time, because it's something you have to live with in your home. But for me, it doesn't have to be perfect. I got kids three, six, and nine, and they're gonna wreck everything I own. So I'm not too worried about it being pristine or perfect. I know it's gonna get washed, it's gonna get scratched, it's gonna get drawn on. So I'd say if you're willing to have an 85% perfect cabinet, go ahead and just stretch it all out on there, get it as tight as you can, and then try to just rub it all down and then work the air bubbles out. Uh, in this video, or maybe another, I will go over some really good techniques how to get those air bubbles out using a hair dryer and a pin or just re-stretching the, the, the laminate so you can make it heal up and seal up and get rid of those wrinkles and pencils. All right, so we got that precision crafted handy work there. Like I said, gave up on the uh, slow and steady perfect and I went for the like 85% good enough but fast. I mean, this took me less than 20 minutes to cover this whole thing and get pretty much 99% of the bubbles out of it. Uh, no creases, looked really good, worked out great, got all three sides, Ooh, a little tight in here. Uh, so yeah, all three sides done, not a whole lot of overlap, looks pretty straight, looks really good. And so now, 
my task is going to be on these corners to cut the overlap, fold this over, fold this in, and get that all lined up. And then once that's done, I'm going to start working on the door. So for the sake of transparency and good YouTubing, I'm going to actually remove this whole bracket so I can fold this tape in better. Uh, when I initially started, I was taking the doors off the hinges. Now I think I'm actually going to take the whole bracket off uh, just to make the whole process a lot easier. And I just add that in there because I hate it when I'm watching a video and the guy says, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. And then you get to a part in the video and realize he'd done something else. Not too sure what it was, but typically then when you go to try to do it, you're like, Oh, he did that and didn't capture it in the video. So just making sure it's very clear. Okay, so I've trimmed this part here and cut it out so it fits over this lip. And then this part curls over and goes underneath. And then I trimmed across here and bent it over this side. And I left it long enough that I'm able to bend it along to the inside without interfering with the hinges here. I love these little brackets. My kids think that they look like speeder bikes. You put two little people on them. They'd be like the speeder bikes from Star Wars. Pretty cool. Now with the door, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the cabinet. I'm going to start from just the lip on the back side, come over the top, all the way down to the bottom, and then just a little bit underneath. Before I can get started, I need to get rid of this little handle right here. Nice. So if you lack the ability to remove things with the power of your mind and the tip of your finger, a little screwdriver takes the nuts out of the back and you just make sure when you have these fixtures, you hold on to the fixture and keep the screws in a safe place so they don't roll away. Okay guys, do you want to see just how, I mean, amazing I am? <laughs> just kidding. Completely lucky. Check this out. Sorry for the bad lighting angles. But do you see this? That's the seam right there for the door. And all my lines lined up pretty much perfectly along this seam to match up with the door in here just to prove it. Here we go, a little live action video. Here we go, look at that. Oh, wrong door. Look at that. It lined up perfectly and I <laughs> swear to you my fellow can youtubers I did not do that on purpose just by the grace of God that all lined up thanks again for watching and have a great night bye bye oh dang that is a huge wrinkle for instructional purposes only while doing my project I inserted both a major and a minor wrinkle into this board so I can show you the bonus footage of how to remove both small and large wrinkles out of your laminate Okay, center stage here. We have a very small wrinkle right along the edge of this. I'm not sure, too sure how well you can see it. I tried to adjust my lights to best show what it looks like. Maybe you can see a little better now. So the trick with these wrinkles is to just take the back of your fingernail and rub on them ever so forcefully. And what you're going to do is kind of get some finger skin and your fingernail on it. And that's going to heat up the laminate and kind of relax it a little bit and allow you to rub that wrinkle completely out. And what happens is the rest of the laminate around it will also warm up a little bit and it will begin to absorb the excess laminate and smooth it out. You may not get it completely gone, but you're going to get it gone well enough that probably you're the only person that's going to notice it was there. But the key is that friction. That friction heats up the laminate and causes it to smooth out. So as you find those little tiny imperfections in your laminate, go ahead and rub these out. Now if you find a bubble and you just can't seem to push it to the edge or push it out or smooth it out and push it away, what you can do is take a pin, poke a small tiny hole in it, and then try to squeeze it like you're popping a zit. Squeeze that stuff in together and then rub it really good once you're done to help the laminate relax 
and absorb the distance of the, of the hole that you've created as well as the excess laminate that the, hole, that the bubble was holding. Let's try that out. Now with these larger wrinkles, you're going to have to do something a little more severe to get this to relax and stretch out. So what you're going to have to do is grab yourself a hair dryer. Maybe not everybody has one of those. So if you don't, you could use a heat gun, which if you're a girl, you probably have a hair dryer. And if you're a dude, you probably have a heat gun. But there are plenty of dudes with hair dryers and plenty of girls with heat guns. So I by no means am trying to ruffle any feathers there, ladies and gentlemen. And if all else fails, what you could do is get a wet towel or a wet washcloth and put an iron on it and try to use steam. The idea is the steam is going to relax the laminate and allow you to force this wrinkle out. Now that you've warmed the area up, try your best to push the wrinkle towards the center. And as you can see, it all but practically disappears. The idea is not to heat this up so bad that it melts the laminate, but that just makes it flexible, flexible and pliable enough to where you can push that wrinkle out. So as you can see now, where that horrible hideous wrinkle was, it is completely gone. Not there anymore. Now, as you can see on the edge here, I still got a little work to do on that, but where that original huge crease was it's completely gone just do the help of a little bit of a hair dryer and a little bit of time but again try not to overheat it you don't want to melt the plastic you don't want to heat your surface up too much just get it warm enough where it's going to be pliable and able to move as you can see as i heat up that last spot that last bad crease just disappears this also causes the plastic to this also causes the adhesive underneath to loosen up as well and become more flexible and pliable which allows you to again move the surface around and flatten it out so when you're done with your project go ahead and give it a good once over and check to see if you can find any creases or bubbles and then try to push them out as best you can and if not grab the hair dryer the heat gun or even your iron and you remove all those blemishes from your perfect project.